Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at a Czech Republic VZ24 bayonet made to fit the 8mm Mauser VZ24 rifle. Uh, so this is actually the third iteration of their uh, VZ20-ish uh, <laughs> bayonets. So initially they uh, developed the VZ22 rifle which was a, um, a very very long rifle and came with a very short bayonet. Uh, that was deemed to be a bit too impractical, so in um, 1923 they uh, made a refinement and made the rifle nice and short, but uh, they didn't want to sacrifice the uh, the reach of the bayonet, so they increased the length of the bayonet on the VZ-23 bayonet, so those are quite long. Uh, there's a bit of... Um, a lot of collectors out there will label them uh, VZ-23 uh, is short and long, but uh, the VZ-22 is a short bayonet and um, the VZ-23 is a long bayonet, and they're different lengths for different reasons. They're not different lengths of the same bayonet. And uh, that brings us to um, 1924, where they um, shortened it because there, was, um, there were a lot of complaints from particular cutlery, I think it was, that uh, the bayonet was too long, coming in at... Um, uh, 40 centimeters so they had it shortened by 10 centimeters down to 30 so what we have here which is still very long for a Mauser style bayonet of the uh, of the day it's definitely on the longer side most of the other Ma uh, Mauser bayonets out there by the 1920s were considerably shorter now um, a number of these were made for export as well as for the Czech military now um, the exports they're virtually identical to what we have here, except you'll notice that the blade is actually on the wrong side of the bayonet. It's on the side with the muzzle ring, which um, when held with the pommel facing down, the blade is pointing up. It's inverted. That was copied from the uh, Austro-Hungarian um, model of 1895 uh, bayonet. All of theirs had that feature. And the Czechs carried it on. And when they um, made their export bayonets for other countries, and they made them for a lot of other countries. Not all of them had verted blades. Some of them uh, didn't. Some of them had uh, downwards facing blades. So pretty cool when you come across those. Now uh, these were made from uh, 1924 all the way through until uh, 1950. But um, obviously a lot happened in between those years. So there's a couple different iterations of uh, this style of bayonet. So the initial um, iterations, what we have here, so made from 1924 until about 1940 was when they stopped manufacturing uh, this style here. And um, obviously 1940 is uh, the Second World War. Germany has taken the Czech Republic and they take over uh, manufacturing um, of, uh, of Czech arms. So Czech Republic had a lot of um, industry for manufacturing arms. They were quite good at it, and the Germans uh, took over that industry uh, for their own purpose. So about 150,000 of these bayonets here were uh, given as uh, surplus, well, not surplus, sorry, given as aid with the rifles, obviously, to Romania when Romania sided with the Axis. Uh, and then uh, once Germany took over production, they made a couple of modifications to these. So I'll get in here a little bit closer so you can see. You'll notice there is a very, very deep blue on that blade. That's not um, how this was init initially made. Initially, it came in the white or a very light blue. The same as the scabbard here. Now, that's a um, another modification, if you will, uh, separate to uh, what the Germans did to theirs. But um, these were made by uh, BRNO in uh, the Czech Republic. I believe there might have been another manufacturer, but I'm not certain of the name. But the modifications that the, uh, the Germans made to these um, when they took over the manufacturing was they deleted the muzzle ring, very similar to the uh, Car 98K uh, bayonets. Um, they had a very deep, rich blue, exactly the same, or very, very similar to what we have here. They had a serial number on the Ricasso of the blade, which would have been on this side here, where the date of manufacture and the... Um, the check mark is. And um, what else do they do? That's right. So you'll notice the, uh, the grips here, the screws. On the one side, they've got your typical little bayonet screws. On the other side, they're completely rounded. So the Germans cut slots in there so that these can actually be used with a uh, screwdriver. 
I don't know how the Czechs managed to use what they had here, whether they um, used some kind of press to remove them, I don't know. But certainly a bit interesting. Um, the only other modifications that the, uh, the Germans made was, if you have a look at the scabbard here, the mouth of the scabbard is retained by a rivet on either side. So in the uh, German produced ones, the rivets are, were removed and the mouth was actually retained by a screw being uh, screwed into the side. I'm not certain which side, but it was one of them. So obviously German, uh, Germany occupied uh, Czechoslovakia for a couple of years during the war and um, they produced a, a decent number of uh, those bayonets during the war and they were made to fit the, uh, the Car 98K. Then um, after the war in 1946, uh, Czech Republic started manufacturing a few more of these and um, they made them through until uh, 1948 when they had their communist uh, takeover. And uh, they didn't stop production, but uh, what they were uh, making did change a little bit. So my understanding is from 46 until 48, they made pretty much what we have here. But then from 48 through to 50, being the last couple of years of production, the uh, communist made ones had a communist uh, number marked on them, kind of like a, a stock number or something similar. And that's how you can spot them. And there's a couple of them floating around. They're pretty cool. I wouldn't mind getting one. This one here is actually a very, very early uh, example. This one was made in, I think it was 1926? Yes, 1926. So, very, very early. Um, I'll tell you what, we might jump in and um, take a look at the actual bayonet. So, as you can see, it's got a very, very long blade with uh, the inverted blade at the top instead of the bottom, as previously discussed. Very small, simple cross guard, very thick actually. A little muzzle ring. Wooden grips retained by screws. Nice deep uh, tang going all the way down. And a standard Mauser style pommel with a push button. Nice deep uh, T slot Mortise. Uh, is that a T slot? Yeah, I guess you call it T slot. So look at that rounded edge at the bottom which goes the whole way down. Uh, this one has a bit of an interesting uh, history to it, and I'll get to that when I cover off the markings. But, um, yeah, I can actually trace what unit this was actually issued to, which is pretty cool. And uh, taking a look at the scabbard, just a standard uh, steel scabbard. Ball uh, finale down the base here. Standard uh, frog stud and mouth. It's an omnidirectional scabbard, so the blade only goes in uh, one way. Sorry some light on there so you can see. Focus, please. Oh, there you go. So as you can see, the spine of the blade would be at the top. And it takes pretty much a standard style of Mauser frog, so nothing, nothing particularly uh, special. Now, there's a whole range of different markings you can find on these things depending on um, uh, what year they were manufactured, um, whether they were export, what country they went to, if they were, uh, whether they were made under uh, Nazi Germany. So the ones that are made uh, by, uh, uh, under German occupation, they weren't actually called a VZ-24, they are actually uh, called a uh, Zeitengewehrer 24, uh, with a T in brackets, T being the um, abbreviation in German for Czechoslovakia, and Zeitengewehrer being a sidearm. So, most of the Zeitengewehrer designations uh, started at 100, so for each country. So generally all countries had captured weapons by the Germans and they'd um, designate them as a Zeitengewehrer 101, 102, 103, 104 uh, for, in terms of bayonets. And they'd have the designation in brackets of um, F for French or T for Czech, uh, Czech Republic. But they'd still have the same numbers. So you might have a Zeitengewehrer 101F or Zeitengewehrer 101E for England or France. Uh, interestingly, these ones are Zeitengewehrer 24, so I think they've just kept the designation of the rifle that was already in place, which is a bit unique. Anyway, we'll jump in and take a look at the markings. So, there we go. Those come up quite nice. 
So here there we have the uh, CSZ for Czech Republic. Above that, on the cross guard, we have a serial number, and below the CSZ, we have a B. Now, I've been told that the B is uh, the same as like all Mauser style bayonets. It's a, um, a code for the serial number. So the first 10,000 of production won't have a letter. And then once it ticks over 10,000, it'll increment up to A, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0. And then once you get to 10,000 again, it'll go to B. So this would be like what, uh, 29,068 in production, which is very, very early and consistent with the year of manufacture being 1926, quite early. Uh, flipping it over, we've got a few more markings on this side here. So I'm not 100% certain on the marking on the Ricasso there. I haven't figured out what the E stands for. But next to the E in the center there is a little line, and that's the uh, the Bohemian, the um, uh, Czech uh, symbol for sovereignty, essentially. And to the right of that is 26, being the year of manufacture. Uh, and then up on the Ricasso here, upside down, not the Ricasso, sorry, the cross guard, we have the number 15. I still have yet to uh, learn the significance of that number. It could be part of the manufacturing process. It could be um, part of the issuing in uh, within a, a subunit. I don't know. Be interesting to find out though. If you know, comment below and let me know. I'd love to find out. And just like all your Mauser bayonets, I forgot to cover this off in construction. We've got a little um, cleaning inspection oiling hole just here. Both sides of the grip. You find that in all your car 98K bayonets. Uh, no marking on the tang. So quite a few of these VZ24s, you will find a, another marking on the tang, similar to what we have here on the Ricasso, being the year of manufacture and the line and the E. And then working our way down to the pommel. No markings around the circumference of the pommel. However, on the base, here we go. We have on the bottom there a serial number, and above that, 47P. Now, uh, 47P is the 47th Infantry Regiment for the, uh, the Czech Army. P is uh, an abbreviation for the Czech word for regiment. I've forgotten what it is. I looked it up 15 minutes ago, and I've already forgotten. It was a short word like Polk or something like that. But yeah, it's pretty cool that we can trace this one to the, uh, the actual unit. And um, having a look at the scabbard, the only markings we have on the scabbard are on the frog stud here. And that's just another serial number and another CSZ. So the CSZ is quite faintly stamped in there and the serial number is quite crudely done. Now, I haven't found uh, recorded information in a book or anything like that, but I've been told by a pretty reputable collector that um, this serial number stamped in the frog stud here and this one up here on the cross guard they're both quite crudely done and um oh i'm just noticing something now underneath that serial number is a little circle with a c and that's like a government acceptance mark or a manufacturer's mark for um brno in uh czech republic so yeah that serial number definitely would not be original so the collector indicated to me that um, those serial numbers were put in place after the Second World War, post-war. And that's when this uh, bayonet received this rich, deep blue as well. Initially, this would have been uh, quite light, a lot lighter than it is here. So yeah, underneath the serial number there, we've got the circle with the C being the manufacturer's mark for BRNO. And uh, matching serial number on the... Um, the scabbard frog stud and the crossbar. So um, these were used by the Czechs for quite some time until they were replaced um, in uh, 1957, I believe, by the VZ-57 rifle, which is not to be mistaken with an AK. It looks very similar, but it's not an AK. It does take uh, the same ammo, 762 uh, by 39, but um, very, very different. And the, uh, the VZ-57, sorry, the VZ-58 rifle uh, is paired with the VZ-57 bayonet. So this would have been replaced in uh, 1958 onwards.
The VZ57 bayonet is a tiny little thing. Uh, apparently it makes a fantastic throwing knife and uh, has a very, very distinct look to it. Um, I might be able to get hold of one shortly to make a video uh, when I do. Um, yeah, well, I can't wait to, uh, to have a look at it. Anyway, guys, if I've missed anything or made any uh, errors, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm a bit of a novice with uh, Czech bayonets. I've just done some um, cursory reading and digging and spoken to a couple of collectors and a couple of guys who are more knowledgeable than me and scrounged up what I can for you. But if you know uh, more than I do or if I've made any errors, comment below and I'll fix it up in the description. Thanks for watching.